Hello. Hello, hello, everyone. I'm going to get started. I see a bunch of you still joining. I'm so happy about this. Um, I'm in my new digs, took a couple weeks off to move, uh, got to decorate, so I need to put up some campfire stuff uh, soon. But I'm so, so, so happy to be here with all of you. Um, a few words just to get started. Those of you who've been here before will know this. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining. Uh, this is the 15th installment of the Digital Campfire Download. This is a series where I talk to the creatives and the entrepreneurs who are building and stoking the world's most interesting digital campfires right now and the fastest growing ones. I'm Sarah Wilson and for those of you who don't know me and are new to this, um, I'm a digital content strategist based in LA. I created the term digital campfire to describe a type of online destination that's more intimate, more private, and more interactive than public facing social platforms. And I launched the series to meet the creative and the entrepreneurial forces behind hyper engaged digital campfires with a goal to kind of get inside them and understand the strategies that really make them burn bright especially in a time where there's so much uncertainty. I couldn't be more thrilled to introduce my guest today, but first a quick FYI, um, the conversation is going to run about 45 to 50 minutes. You're going to have the chance to ask questions uh, at the end. You can also ask questions throughout the interview uh, via the chat feature in Zoom, and, and I will do my best to integrate them into the interview or bring you in if you so desire. Um, this is being recorded. It's going to be shared out afterwards. And I'm doing this from home. Uh, so if we get disconnected, it's not happened yet, but one never knows, just dial back in, just come on right back. Um, the last thing is instead of logging off after the show ends, you're invited to stick around for like 15 to 20 minutes uh, for sort of a free form conversation I'll be moderating that jumps off this week's topic. It'll be a chance for you to meet and share ideas and learn from one another. We did it a couple weeks ago and it was great. So now on to my guest today. Everyone knows the music streaming platform Spotify. I mean, it's become a fixture in our lives now in a way that only a few apps and services are. But what you may not know is that it's not just a platform. The app also has a lively community um, in the form of Spotify forums where users post and solicit advice on everything from technical issues to suggestions for best quarantine playlists. And this community has also spawned a digital campfire for its super fans. I would liken to kind of an ambassador program on steroids. It's called Spotify Rockstars. We're going to get into the nuts and bolts of Rockstars today with my two guests. The first, Allison Leahy, who oversees social care and community at Spotify, and Oscar Osornio, a member of the Rockstars program. So thank you so, so much to both of you for joining me today. Pleasure yeah, to be here. Yeah. So happy to have both of you. This was, uh, you know, this is one of my sort of like pie in the sky. I want to have Spotify on. So I'm thrilled that both of you could be here. So Allison, before we get into rock stars, I want to talk about the Spotify community portal because I think there are a lot of people who use Spotify pretty much every day, like myself, and don't know about like what that portal is, where it is, how to access it. I actually saw someone on Twitter say the other day, I wish Spotify was more of a social platform. And it kind of is. Um, so I'd love for you to just quickly talk about that. What is the community portal? What goes on in there? Yes. So our community, community.spotify.com, can be accessed direct, but 80 to 90% of our visitors on any given day are coming through search. Um, so it is, a, we have about 4 million visitors per month, which, you know, when you compare that to our listener base is a small fraction. Um, so findability, you know, you really do have to be looking for it, have a question, have an intention to come visit the community forums. It was originally launched as a support space. So over 80% of the conversation there is around support and services. About 10% is around community led innovation and product ideas. So if you have a, a you know, an interest in some new feature or feature improvements, you can share those with us via the forums and uh, we have a nice tight feedback loop with our product development teams. Um, 
And then we have, you know, kind of miscellaneous music chat area, which is more of the kind of social proof section. Uh, if you're, you know, more interested in discussing music, sharing playlists. So it does make up a smaller aspect and in terms of the overall ratio of conversations happening on community. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of the community. It was founded back in 2011. And uh, because it's been around for a, a nice long while, there's you know significant volume of historic conversations there. You can really learn a lot about the history and the evolution of the platform mm -hmm. through content on the forums. Okay, so the platform launched in 2007 and Community Hub was born in 2011. So mm -hmm. like, why? Like, why does Spotify start it and maintain it? Just so I understand from a big picture. Yeah, so again, you know, being a, born out of customer service operations. My role at Spotify, I oversee our global social care and community program. And I'm part of customer service operations, which is uh, uh, sits within our freemium business unit. So the group that's responsible for, you know, your customer experience as you join the service. And then if you convert to a premium user, whatever kind of subscription plans, bundles, additional services included in the whole kind of experience in that range. Um, one of the reasons the community was initially founded was to, there's, there's sort of this like, you know, there's so only so much we can do in terms of maintaining evergreen support content, the kinds of basic troubleshooting questions and FAQs, right. everything you need to get started and learn about new features. And that is really well solved by our support site. But there's this other aspect of, of the product, you know, this a combination or where that community sits that's really um, where it's adding value is the long tail support content. So if there's an issue right now, if Spotify is offline or if you're having difficulty accessing some piece of content, so, you know, outages, incidents, long tail support issues that are temporary, um, we'll often get um, users posting about those issues and our rock stars actually pick play a fundamental role here, helping to identify and diagnose those issues, report those back to the company, but then also sort of aggregate the conversation around them and, yeah. and help to support users through them. But then there's also, there's, there's also another element, which is, you know, how do people use the product? And do people, you know, a lot of our rock stars are, um, and I would say especially our rock stars seem to kind of over index heavily in like the playlist creators or, you know, have very niche music knowledge that they want to share with people. And so we provide a space to discuss that as well that you wouldn't be able to find on, on another um, support site. Okay, so the community was built for support. Now we're talking rock star. So what, what is that? What, tell me broad strokes what the program is. Cause I think, yeah. Again, a lot of people aren't familiar with that. Yeah, so the um, Rockstar program was founded a couple years after the inception of Community when um, our then community manager, Rory Jones, identified or recognized this sort of phenomenon of um, just highly engaged users. You know, every, I, I think, it re I mean, certainly with a, a service like Spotify, but most communities you'll see super passionate fans come and congregate on the community and you know we really as community leaders and builders we want to build our communities to serve these users um, and so identifying that there was uh, a small group of users who spent a lot of time on the community started to think about how could we how could we get to know these people fundamentally you know how can we um, cultivate this this group and help them to succeed in what seemed to be a kind of intrinsic motivation to respond and to support peers um, to learn about other people's experiences with the platform. So the initial program goals were really to celebrate our most engaged fans and enable them to provide support and to help kind of extend our support services in this community. Um, but then also from the business side, just to have a direct line to passionate fans around the world. Mm -hmm. And additionally, you know, um, creating uh, a sounding board um, for CS and for our product teams to understand, you know, to, to help kind of bring that influence back into the company in terms of um, product development. 
development, feature testing. Um, and so we kind of built it up from, from there. Okay, amazing. So your so this goal was, and I'm having some trouble hearing you, but it's, so far it's been okay. So hopefully it'll be fine. Uh, but apologies for that on if it's on mm-hmm. my end. Um, but uh, so you know, tell me that what it sort of broad strokes consists of, and then I'd love to hear from Oscar about his experience in the program. Like you apply, you get in, then what? And maybe mm-hmm. start at the start at the beginning, kind of high level. Yeah. So it is an open selection process. And I'll speak up a little bit. Let me know if that helps. Um, So community members can apply through an open application process. It's open to anyone to apply. And and there's a quiz kind of to test Spotify knowledge. So there are a few hurdles you have to jump to get Mm -hmm. into what we call our rising stars group. Okay. And and then you rank up through the Rising Stars program and through your contributions, participation, and engagement, you can eventually uh, reach and attain the goal of Rockstar. So the Rockstar program encompasses Rising Stars and Rockstars. And um, in order to access the quiz, so there, you know, those hurdles I mentioned, you mm-hmm. must first contribute to at least 10 ongoing discussions. And then what's also a bit unique about our program is that we actually have a quality measure. So a lot of people in community, you know, are familiar with gaming the system or just, you know, generating content to generating content. There's no real merit or value Mm. to what's, to the actions that are taking place. So anytime you implement kind of any sort of gamification elements, if you will, um, you know, you have to have a counterbalance to that to ensure that the type of contributions you're getting are of a high quality. Mm -hmm. And so we did introduce a peer quality review process to ensure not only that the quality of the content was good, but that anybody who aspired to be a rock star had the type of support and coaching they needed to succeed in achieving that goal. And also, you know, to help kind of explain throughout this process what the program is about, make sure that there was clarity of expectations, that it was, you know, the idea of being a rock star is, you know, matches that um, so that um, we could essentially uh, have a really well-meaning, well-informed group Mm -hmm. um, coming together to, yeah. yeah, And um, yeah, and once, Yeah, once you're in the program, then, you know, you have access, uh, you start to unlock additional privileges. So here's where the gamification and and ranking system comes in again. So Mm -hmm. through your activities, you can increase your access, um, both to the community team, to the product team, um, and, you know, all the way up to coming to Spotify headquarters to join the Rockstar Jam and, and, hear from our CEO and founder and meet some of the other product teams and groups. Yeah, so it's kind of the the crown jewel in the program. Right, I think it's important to say it goes from sort of these digital rewards all the way up to a very, very intimate IRL interaction that pre-COVID you could have the opportunity to have every year. Yeah. Um, And so we'll talk about how that's evolved, but I want to flip over to Oscar to talk about your experience in the program and and welcome to the show, Oscar. I mean, I know you're based in Mexico. I am, yes. Okay. So how'd you first hear about the program? It's pretty under the radar, but I feel like if you know, you know, right? It's one of those things. Uh, Not really. Uh, As Elson uh, told before, uh, most of us uh, rock stars, uh, come to the community asking for, I mean, looking for an answer for whatever yeah. issue that we have. Okay. So that's like the first step. We usually learn about the community because we have a problem with the system or or with our service or yeah. whatever. No? And once we come to the community looking for answers, we discover there is an actual community, an organic community about uh, other users helping other users. It's like a, a peer helping system. Right. And and from there, uh, you you stick. I mean, you 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 if if you're into it, uh, you start meeting people and you start changing ideas or exchanging tips about how using the uh, the service, and and you organically 
uh, start de developing the relationships with Spotify too, because uh, uh, most of us uh, come to the community and after a while, uh, the community managers uh, contact us and say, hey, do you want to come to the program? Do you, do you want to engage in our, in our roster program? And, and from then on, uh, you, ca you can grow inside the community. Got it. So for you, it was in it for, for everyone, really, it sounds like it's a totally organic relationship. It starts organically. You're interacting, you're answering, and then someone connects with you and goes, hey, you seem like a very active member. Uh, is this something you'd want to apply for? Yes. Um, okay. So now let's say you're, you're asked to apply. Uh, Allison mentioned the barriers to entry. Talk about those a little bit and what your experience was with those, because I think that's a really important part of joining any kind of like ambassador program or community where people actually care to be there. Like the best digital campfires I've found really have something of a barrier to entry. So talk about a little bit about your experience there. Uh, well, my experience uh, comes from using Spotify a lot. Okay. So uh, when I came to the community, I discovered that I knew uh, most of the answers people were asking. Yeah. So uh, I already had the knowledge. And right. And I started uh, being active by answering these questions, not because I wanted to answer them, because I, I knew the answers. So it was easier for me to to tell them my experience with those issues that people were having. Yeah. And and then from from then on, uh, you you get to to not just answer uh, these questions, but but get in touch with the developers and get in touch with other. Uh, community members and and from then on the experience is oh I, I have uh, I want to do this in the community can I do it first got it so and, there's yeah oh, go ahead and, yeah and and then uh, from there it, it's uh, you get like uh, some kind of mentoring from other rock stars mm -hmm. like uh, hey you're doing this great you're, you're like this, some type of feedback and 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 just uh, patting the back like, uh, hey, uh, you're good in what you're doing. Yeah. And that motivates you to keep doing it. Yeah, very much so. So I want to break that down a little bit because I think that's super interesting. So what are you asked to do as a member of the Rockstar program? So let's say you're in, you know, you, you, you got your, you did your certain amount of things, you applied, you're in, what, what's the labor involved? And then I want to talk about on the other side of it, what do you feel you, you get for that? It sounds like we, we already talked about that, but I want to go deeper. So let's talk about the first part of that question. What do you need to do to make Yeah, well, the thing is that uh, um, they're really, yeah there's not like, like anything to do. I mean, you just uh, participate. Okay. And by that, I mean, is just to get, well, like any other community, you go to the forums, you, you check uh, uh, what's in the forums. And, and like uh, Alison said, there's a, a support aspect, aspect of the yep. community. So you go to the support aspect of the community, there's like an Android uh, section, like the Windows section, Mac section. And, and there's threats about uh, issues about this, the service. Mm -hmm. And you, you see that, uh, hey, I'm, I had this issue. So uh -huh. sometimes you say, hey, I'm having this problem too. I, does anyone know how to fix it? And if you do, well, you just answer it. You, you, you participate in, in that way. Got it. So, so that's like a, a way of... Uh, being meaningful about what you're posting about. So it's not like, oh, I need to post 10, 10 times or right. oh, I, need, I need to to make five threads to to rank up or anything like that. But it's more like uh, hang around the community. And if, if someone uh, has some issues or even if yourself had an issue, yeah. uh, you can report it there and, and interact with everyone else. I love that. I think that's such an important point you called out because from Spotify's, Spotify's point of view, you're actually building almost little really customer service reps who care, <laughs> people who actually can answer questions, who actually are incentivized to do it with all the features of the Rockstar program. And you're sort of scaling that team. So from a business point of view, that's super interesting. And then from your point of view, Oscar, you're actually just enjoying this authentic connection with people, it sounds like. Well, it's very important to say that uh, Spotify uh, really revolutionized how uh, music was heard. Yeah. So in the beginning, 
uh, is, is streaming was uh, something new, something people didn't understand the concept about it. Uh, before uh, you just uh, bought your CDs to listen to music or you downloaded your music through iTunes or, mm -hmm. or there, there was another uh, uh, way to consume music. So when Spotify came in, uh, people were having trouble understanding what streaming was. And right. it's kind of mind blowing that right now everyone knows what, what uh, you get from Spotify, but that was not the case uh, even five years ago. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it has changed very rapidly. So those kind of questions uh, are the ones that we started to answer in the beginning. Like, uh, I mean, what's, what is streaming? What, right. what, what, I can, what can I do? Why can't I mean? Like super 101. Yes, yeah, yeah. very, 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 very uh, basic stuff. But it's important. It's important because it, it really uh, makes you value more uh, the service that you are getting. Yeah, very much so. So beyond these authentic and, and sort of fun, it sounds like satisfying interactions with people, um, talk a little bit about what you actually get out of this. So we know about this kind of opportunity to go to Stockholm at the end of the year. I'd love for you to talk a little more about that. There's, it sounds like there's two categories, like the nuts and bolts, like the badges, you know, the access to developers, but then there's kind of an emotional piece as well of uh, getting to contribute to something. So maybe you could talk about both. The first is kind of what are those things you get as you participate that help you feel more valued in the community that Spotify gives you? Uh, uh, well, there's a Spotify merchandise. Okay. That uh, is like the first rewards that you're starting to get because uh, it's very easy to get them. It's, you don't really need to do much more than being active in the community and you're starting to get some, some merchandise in mail. Okay. So that's very rewarding in the, in the beginning okay. because, uh, I mean, I, I've met some Spotify employees that would, that's, they get to see those merchandise as, and say, oh, I wish I, I could get that because <laughs> I want You that. don't even give it to your True. own employees? You don't even give it? <laughs> I, and they don't have access to it. I mean. My God, uh, talk uh, about limited edition merch. I, that's it. That's it. I mean, a, a coffee cup. I mean, it's, it's something that you can get. It's not hard to get it. And, yeah. And, and it's really rewarding to to one day get it, get it in the mail and use it. I mean, right. that's like like the first reward that you get. Uh, obviously, uh, getting in touch with uh, beta programs is very important to rock stars. With beta programs, because, so Spotify's yes. betas. So you you get early access. Is that what you so mean? So you you yeah. get uh, not only early. Sometimes we get uh, get to test. Uh, uh, some features of the app that ne never get out to the public because cool. for whatever reason, uh, they don't get implemented, but as a rock star, you get to it. And not only that, uh, you get to, to give your opinion about it. So, mm -hmm. so it's not like, uh, Hey, you have this new feature. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's more active. It's like, Hey, uh, we want you to use it and we want to know what you think about it and how can we get uh, better about it? So, so that's a, mm -hmm. a and think about the program too. Right. And then talk a little bit about this Stockholm trip because I think that's really interesting. It feels like very different from what a lot of companies could offer. And have you been like to the actual, yes. it's called a Rockstar Jam or what's it called? It's called a Rockstar Jam. It, it happens once a year. Okay. Uh, it, it has happened in Stockholm, but we also went to the New York uh, offices too. So, so, I mean, it, there's a lot of ideas on, on how to, on how that gets implemented. I mean, it could be in London another year or in some, I mean, it's in any of the offices that they have. And I've been to both to Stockholm and the New York one. Um, but that, that's, that's hard to get. That okay. one is like, it's not easy to get there because, uh, those that reward is really for uh, super users. I mean, super rocks are like top uh, stars. I mean, uh, and that's because a Spotify, a Spotify uh, takes care of, uh, of everything. I mean, you get to to they pay like the airplane fare, they pay like the hotel, they 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 get you to the tours in the office. I mean, right. it's hard to organize and yeah, it's a big list. Uh, it, and, and can be accessed to all to many people. It, it has to be a really small group of okay, so like, How did you get it? How did you do that? Just being like an insanely active user? Of uh, uh, yes, okay. yes, because uh, uh, in, in the beginning, uh, 
you have to be like a, a top star. Got it. Okay. But there was not, there wasn't a metric about it. Yeah. And that has changed over the years. Now we have a metric and we have some rock star points and participations. And the more you participate, the more rock star point you get. Okay. So it, it's uh, more transparent how they choose who goes and who doesn't. Okay. So those are all the actual like logistical pieces of it. What about the emotional ones? Like, what do you think, what, how would you describe the feeling that you get from being part of this program? Whether it's uh, getting a coffee cup or a coffee mug or whatever, any aspect of it. Yeah, it, it grows on you because uh, in the end, what I enjoy the most about the program is meeting other people. And I have done so. And not only in, with Spotify staff and community managers, but also another rock stars. Mm -hmm. So these uh, gathering that you get uh, once a year, they come from all over the world. I mean, mm -hmm. I have friends from Brazil, from Australia, uh, obviously uh, uh, Swedish people, uh, American people. I mean, this community is really a global community. Mm -hmm. And and that's, uh, for me, that's what I get the most about. I mean, yeah. you get to meet our people in person. Yep. And you meet them and you talk to them in person once a year, probably. But you feel like you met them all your life. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you get to interact with them uh, every day in the community and then you get to see them and you get to talk to them in person and you get to understand that uh, um, nationalities doesn't matter right it's it's more about uh, what your interests are and your mu your passion about music your passion about uh, technology because spotify is also uh, very linked about uh, technology mm -hmm. and and that's uh that's the uh, the big picture about this it's so important, I think, just to, to call out what you just said, because uh, it's really at the end of the day about relationship between members. That's the most important. It's like you can facilitate top down from the company to the members, but if you're not also finding ways for co connections within those communities, it's a big miss. Um, and so I think that's important to call out. So let's go back to Allison. I want to understand kind of how many people are in Rockstars now. We got a question, you know, how many people are invited to the jam? Like, just want to understand like the the scope of it so people can kind of get like let's say you're you're listening to this and you want to build something like this of your own or it's in a nascent phase so let's start with how many people are in this program now yeah so we have just under 50 members five so, zero. Um, five zero. okay five zero yeah. yes um, currently and they are from over 15 different countries and just 10 will, would be invited to the Rockstar Jam in any given year. Okay. Um, so it is a very, it's a, it's a very intimate group. And I think, you know, a lot of that is a result of the, um, and we've, we've experimented to, you know, we've grown the program to as many as 150, but we learned we, we scaled too quickly. We didn't have the infrastructure or resources on the community management side to onboard effectively. We, we, you know, and I think a lot of community, you have a lot of community managers in your audience who can probably um, understand that you know, whenever you have kind of an influx of new membership, managing that change is it can be very delicate, especially if you have a core group of users who um, know each other very well. And there's, there's, you know, it takes time to kind of build a program like this. So, um, so we found 50 is a really, it's a, it's a very great, um, it's a good spot for us to be in right now. Now that's not to say that we don't have ambitions to grow the program again, because I think what we've discussed is how um, the, the rock stars today are very focused on helping other users, this peer support aspect, but we've recognized that there's a lot of skills within that group and a lot of potential to do so much more. Mm -hmm. So we want to help kind of unlock that potential and give our existing rock stars new ways to contribute and also grow the program organically through that means. So creating new ways to contribute, um, leveraging this sort of network effect where there's more peer-led and rock star led onboarding and co-mentoring and so that's kind of the direction we're headed and mm -hmm. you said at the top of this actually that you know this is kind of like an ambassador program and i would say that's that's 
almost true. I think that's kind of one of the directions we're yeah. headed. Um, you well, know, I said I on steroids to, because yeah, I to, think to, there's a, oh right, yeah. <laughs> because I think there's an element of this that's like, yeah, it's like if you had to quickly describe it, you could say ambassador program, but it's so much more, and uh, and that's why. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I totally appreciate that. And I think there are elements that we're almost lacking, actually, for it to fit like a true definition of an ambassador program as well. So, um, yeah, I guess those are some of the basics. And mm -hmm. then I might have I might have missed yeah, the question. Just in terms of a cap. So is there a cap? So if you're at 50 yeah. now, people are applying, presumably, or people are trying to get in. Are you saying, you know, we're not accepting new members? Like, how do new members come in? If you're already at 50, do you rotate them out every like year? We have not had to do that. Okay. Um, I've, I've led other programs where that sort of natural kind of attrition has happened or been not so natural. Um, but we have not actually kind of cycled people through the program. We try to create a space where people can contribute. And as Oscar had mentioned too, you know, there's, um, there is sort of a lower like threshold for participation where if you happen to disengage from the program for several months over time where um, you're really just not even visiting the community, you know, we might check in with you and, um, uh, and just see if you're still interested in participating and at what capacity you can just to ensure that we do have space and are, uh, you know, retaining a group of engaged participants effectively. Um, because there is special access, right, as well. So there's almost a security concern associated with people disengaging right. and not offboarding them appropriately. But that's really the only reason we would offboard. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we, um, you know, the, the program is open and we will support new joiners as they arrive, as they arrive um, through whatever it means we can and, and try to just, um, you know, adapt to kind of, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, to the different shape that this program can take based on its membership. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. When you were describing, when Oscar was talking a little bit about sort of what he does to go in and answer questions and how that's kind of a key part of what um, part of the expectation is around being a rock star. It reminded me a little bit of um, when I chatted with the community lead for Modern Fertility, they have a Slack channel and she calls that behavior scaled intimacy. So it's actually like using and deploying people like Oscar, Oscar and all the you know, Rockstars cohort to create an intimate one-on-one -on -one experience. But Spotify itself is not necessarily like in charge of that, but you trust, you really, you've established that relationship of trust so much so that you can actually scale what you're doing. And, and I think that's like a lot of people run into this problem of like, well, a community, it's not scalable. It's really hard. It's just a few people, but actually it creates those customer relationships that have like a, a network effect or like a, like a ripple effect. So I think that's really interesting to call out. I also think it's cool what you said about, you know, this isn't for everyone. It's a small group. And, you know, I talk about digital campfires. I talk about they're not for everyone. It's for, it's for your MVPs. It's for your real sort of core people. And was that part of the original vision? Like wh when, when you guys developed this program, was it sort of like, we want to be for everyone and one day we will be, or was it always meant to be small? It was always meant to be small, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, I think we recognized, um, and well, for a few reasons, I mean, one, just how, you know, you want to be able to apply uh, mm -hmm. the right amount of attention to nurture a program. And so that kind of limits it to some degree anyway. And we did experiment, as I mentioned, with scale, but mm -hmm. um, it's, which, but the results are very different. It becomes transactional. Yeah. And we were really conscious that whenever it kind of starts to cross that line, I love the phrase scaled intimacy because mm -hmm. that's, um, yeah, that enables you to create something meaningful at a scale without reducing it to transactional or, you know, I love the fact, so I actually met Oscar in Sweden a couple of years ago, and I have to say, like, the flip side of the Rockstar Jam, it is a highlight for our stars, it is a highlight for our employees as well. I mean, we promote that program. We get people to sign up in the offices. So many people want to share their products and to have like real live engagement with yeah. the stars. And, um, 
And yeah, so that is just, uh, you know, it's, com it goes both ways, right? It's, it's, um, I, I want to get to know everyone in the program to some degree because it adds so much when I go to work every day, like thinking, at, you know, having our, our real faces and people yeah. in mind. Yeah, it's so interesting because I didn't even think about there's that relationship between rock stars and, and product developers. And that rolls directly mm -hmm. up into how the Spotify product is shaped. So Oscar, would you say, is that a highlight of your experience being on Rockstars? Can you talk uh, it, about that? It is. Actually, the name uh, Rockstar program, to me, uh, that's the importance about, uh, about it. It's not about being a rock star to the world, but uh, we get the rock star treatment when we get to meet these developers. Mm -hmm. And that has happened to me as an experience. I mean, I go to these uh, rock star jams and we get to meet these uh, uh, customer service representatives or developers of the app. And I introduce myself and they say, oh, I know who you are. And uh, can I get a picture with you? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's really that rock star treatment that you get from them. It's, it, they really value what you do in the community. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really meaningful for them to get to meet you when, in person. And it's again, like, like I said before, it, it's, it's a relationship thing. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, you, you get to, to meet in person people that you may be having interactions all year long in the community. Yeah. So, so the rock star part of it is, is more about it. It's more about getting to the company and meeting these people. And for example, uh, we had some meetings with uh, the CEO or the really big uh, Spotify officers. And, and the first thing that they say to us is, uh, thank you for what you're doing. I mean, we really value what you do and we're really happy to have you here and we're really glad to meet you. Mm -hmm. so, wow, what a simple statement and what a simple, like just the fact that you said that or that you had that experience, it's getting yes. buy-in from the very top. That's so, so key and I wanna call it out because a lot of businesses think of this community building as secondary and clearly Spotify has prioritized it as fundamental up and down the company. So thank you for, for calling that out. See, so, so that, that's what happens with them. So you get to, to meet uh, uh, these developers and yeah. then rank up uh, with, uh, with the company and, and they're the ones interested in meeting you. Yeah. You're, you're the guest there and, and you're the, like the feature presentation of that day. Right. You, you get to, to get that rockstar treatment. So, it's really it's, meaningful. It's so interesting what you say, because I, you know, I think oftentimes a lot of companies think of this community building effort as a marketing play. You know, it's over here. Uh, I think it's interesting because Spotify has really integrated. It's a, it sounds like it's a business play. That's both marketing and business, but it's, it's really core to your business goals. Allison, can you talk a little bit about, because I want to understand how you think about the value it drives for Spotify beyond marketing. It sounds like it touches product. It touches actual business goals. Like, could you talk a little bit about that? Cause I think it's, it's really hard for some businesses to understand. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I joined Spotify to a little over two and a half years ago now. And, um, and when I first joined understanding that community lives within customer service operations and we were, you know, as any community leader will, you want more resources, you're going to make an argument, make a business case to get a new yeah. community manager, whatever it is you need, um, dev resources, common one. So first we started positioning the business case around contact deflection. Again, pretty common because we're um, receiving a, quite a high volume of customer service queries, which are Sorry, being around, resolved. Can you just repeat what you said that around content curation? I just, you cut out for a sec. Oh, sure. Um, so the initial business case we went in with was around um, contact deflection. So deflection. So, you know, trying to, through search and self-service, uh, resolve more customer queries so they didn't have to contact our service got teams it. directly. Okay. And, you know, the feedback I got on that was like, yep, we understand this. This is all good. Um, but what else? And so that's when we started talking about, you know, more concepts of um, 
or the almost harder to quantify from a, a dollars and cents perspective, brand loyalty, retention, share of voice, um, engagement and enthusiasm for the product. But probably most importantly, it was this concept of community led innovation. So what we've talked about, can, you know, Oscar being recognized by some of our product teams because of his participation in community. There are two components around this. One is really all of the ideas that are generated by community and posted to our community boards. And our rock stars serve as idea guardians, by the way. So they do filter and help to kind of categorize and help us to interpret and understand what, what people want. And we push those into our internal ticketing system, JIRA, when they reach a threshold of votes and you know, attach some community commentary to that. And that ultimately gets fed into some planning life cycles. So um, can we do this? What's the benefit of doing this? Why do users really want this? Um, and so you know, this, and, and then you know, the other side of that is say the product starts to become implemented. Then we go back to the community, use the community to kind of uh, test it, give some feedback, incubate it, um, and, and so on and so forth. So while we didn't have any hard metrics around that, that program itself was one of the big cells. Another is uh, this, when we first opened this conversation, we talked about the positioning of community, how we most people get there through search for long tail support yeah. issues effectively. So those, those issues that that in our company we call um, you know single user issues potentially like maybe there's literally only one user who is impacted by this but it's a really weird thing that we want to learn about so through our in escalation so we have an ongoing issue board where people post issues that then get tagged and tracked as issues and again go into jira to our engineer to our engineering team who will then help to triage it we have we have some other support teams that help to triage it and then ultimately, you know, sometimes we open a direct line with the community member or we have other input um, to fix those. So those types of like edge case, long tail issue resolution and, um, and product ideation. And then this other, you know, brand loyalty and just creating a space for this to, to um, nurture these customer interactions, really having a direct line to our passionate customers around the world. While we couldn't, like those aren't the programs that are bringing in or like cost savings to a large degree, they're generating value in these ways that, that um, our business leaders find compelling. Mm -hmm. It sounds like not only are you building out the program, but it sounds like as the programs come up, you've had to build out like justification with internally for maintaining that program. And I think a lot of that can be very, as I mentioned, very fuzzy, but it sounds like you found really, really hard, like here are the metrics we use to yeah. really define that. Yeah, absolutely. And I would like to call out also, you know, just this last year. Um, so we have a developer experience team that's growing some we have incredible community team built up under developer experience. They were on GitHub and Stack Overflow, and they've just moved to the Spotify community. So they're actually bringing the developers onto the same community forums as well. So again, this idea of, you know, extended third party tools like Spotify can't and won't necessarily build solutions that all of our users want or mm -hmm. these experiences that all of our users want. But there are some very enterprising and clever developers who will. And so mm -hmm. Um, but again, this idea of like peer to peer support and, you know, how do you use the web API or the SDK, like there's a lot of getting started questions that we can help facilitate um, engagement around and then again, excitement for the product and to build our developer community, which we really do view as an extension again of our product team because they're using, you know, what Spotify has built and enabling mm -hmm. us to achieve our mission, which is really to help support um, millions of creators and help fans find and listen to their music. Mm -hmm. It's totally, it rolls totally up to the mission. So I'm going to start to take questions. Please start popping them in the chat. If you want to like come into the conversation, great. Just use the raise hand feature and I'll, I'll bring you in on video. Um, I, you mentioned a little bit about kind of some of the big challenges with the program, like you expanded too quickly and maybe it wasn't working. Can you speak a little bit about some of those other challenges you've hit? Because I mean, I don't know if it's been all smooth sailing or what. <laughs> 
Yeah, let's see. Um, definitely hasn't been all smooth sailing. Um, I can talk about, um, so here's, here's an interesting one that I think will resonate also with people who have tried to and who are building uh, groups, super user groups. Um, so we have, uh, you know, a, an interest in ensuring that our rock stars are um, spending the quality time on the community, engaging with other users and providing the support. That's an underpinning of the program. And, and what we like literally need is that sort of extension of our support team. Um, you know, just to again kind of scale and ensure that questions are answered when they reach when they hit our boards. Um, one of the things we, because there's also and and this is very healthy for the program, but there's this almost I wouldn't call it competing because they are like symbiotic. But if anyone sort of grows in relation, and I'm talking about here, so uh, you know, actually doing the work of engaging other peers on the community having the fun of getting to know and building relationships with your super user, you know, with your, with your peers in the program or with the Spotify community team. Um, so there, you know, these, the program needs both to be successful. Mm -hmm. but there was a point in it, I was actually kind of following the explosive growth of the program and then sort of the shrinking back down or right sizing of the program that there was um, a lot of like new intimacy and relationships forming. So there's a lot more time kind of spent with each other. And one, and one of the difficulties we had at that point was, uh, so there is a science, like a lot of community is relationship building, but again, to justify the programs, to put the spend in the programs, you need to measure performance and, you know, figure out how you're going to optimize certain things. And so we, a lot of the kind of socialization was happening in Slack. So we do use Slack to support the community program and ensure that escalations are happening right away, that rock stars are getting support and less of it was happening on the forums. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are ways on the forums to get your social proof and to, you know, to engage. So we experimented by removing Slack for a while, and it was not a popular decision. Um, and we did, um, uh, you know, we, we, we kept, we, for about three, maybe close to four, four months leading up to the holiday season, I believe last year, we had eliminated Slack completely. Um, and then we decided, you know, was it really worth it? You know, we actually had some benefit on our side of having that quick access and, you know, found that it was actually a really easy way for us to communicate with the stars as well. So we wanted to bring Slack back in some capacity. So we did do that and we sort of created more kind of guidelines and framing around it and ensured that um, to ensure that the most, the best kind of processes or most effective ways of getting in touch with the community team was being used rather than DMing them on Slack, for example, which again is not scalable. Mm -hmm. So it's always a balance between the one-to-one -one and the scalable. Um, so I'd say that was, you know, that was definitely a learning and something that we had to navigate around was how do we strike this right balance and what tools are going to be the best to support the program. Right. I think it's important. Um, also, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yep. Oh, well. Yeah, I was just going to go into another example, but would love to, yeah, would love to dwell on that one for a minute. Well, I, the question, we actually have a question from, from Jessica Henry, which I'm going to get to in just one sec. I see you, Jessica. Um, but I, I do want to say, because it's the first time it's come up, that you know, it's the forum and then it's also Slack. So, so oftentimes you have to use a couple of different tools to actually help your community communicate. Um, and I wasn't even aware of the Slack and, until now. So I'm really glad you brought it up. Uh, is it just so people who are listening know, is it just for your rock stars to communicate with internal Spotify team or is it a broader set? It is. So for it exists within our Spotify company instance, but okay. it is a private group for the community rock stars okay. to wow. primarily engage with each other, but our community team does use it to push updates to them. But I'd say, you know, really the benefit is, um, so we are not, our community team uh, at Spotify is not a 24 hour operation, but of course the rock stars are, you know, all over the world contributing to the community at any hour. So it's a great way off hours for them to push information where like, 
Um, we, ha we do have 24 hour surveillance teams so we can monitor if there's an incident going on or if they have something to push to us. Um, so primarily I would say it's, you know, the rock stars use it to communicate with each other um, mm -hmm. and socialize to some degree to push information to us. And then maybe to a lesser degree, we use it to communicate. Um, what, like we promoted this talk in our Slack yeah. channel today. Okay, amazing. Um, you know, All for right. example. So I think that's helpful. I think that's really helpful to know. Be oh, sorry, go ahead. I feel like I interrupted you. <laughs> You're good? Oh, you froze. Yes, me, yes. Great. All right, I'm going to bring Jess into the conversation. Um, come on in. You should be able to unmute. Okay, I think I'm unmuted. Yes, you're in. Allison, Oscar, this has been great. I, I'm sort of curious from a like psychology standpoint and a human behavior standpoint, what trends do you see around how people communicate and organize um, yeah, I think that that's something that, that I, I'd be really curious to hear your take or even some of you just like working hypotheses on. Uh, I can answer that. Uh, you know, uh, Spotify as a company has evolved over time and the community has evolved over time too. Because in the beginning, uh, it was more about music consumption. And the people that came to the community was about it, about music and about how to get music to you. But that has changed over time. And now uh, there's more about content creation, about po doing podcasts, about uh, musicians come to the community and want, they want to promote their work. So it's not like, uh, like uh, it, it changes over time. And the, the, the whole Slack thing was because the newer generations are not used to using forums. So when, they, they like to get the, that uh, instant uh, gratification of an answer that you get from Slack and you don't get that in the forums. And when they uh, took away Slack, uh, the, the community users uh, complained because it wasn't, it wasn't that intimacy of getting to chat with someone via Slack. And they were not used to writing a post in a, in, in a forum. So that has changed over time and the users and how we use Spotify, all that has changed from prime years to now. I mean, that, that's the kind of uh, uh, development that has happened uh, with the users and with the behavior of, of us using the community. I think Oscar, what you just called out is such an important shift that obviously Jessica being at Pinterest, you have observed as well, um, I'm sure around, you know, movement from a consumption economy to a creator economy, people really being sort of empowered and excited about being creators, whether you're tiny or you're very evolved. So what you are observing, Oscar, I think is part of that shift and, and one that we'll only see more of as time goes on. Um, Ezra, you had a question, so go ahead. Oscar, Allison, thank you both so much for this conversation. Really, really interesting. Um, Oscar, you spoke a lot about that, like the primary value for you were these in-person interactions where you form deep relationships. And so I'm curious about for the 40 rock stars who, who haven't gone to the in-person gatherings, um, how are relationships formed? And Allison, can you speak to some degree to the, to the quality of those relationships? Um, and uh, and what resources are there are there for them to deepen their relationships? I'm also sort of curious. Like, do you ever meet outside of Spotify? Have you like, do you talk outside the Slack channel? Um, curious how those relationships have formed and blossomed. Uh, well, like I said, uh, the community, the rockstar community, it's a, a global thing. So it's it's very hard for us to to meet in person, if not for these rockstar jams because uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, our social backgrounds are very different and some people work, some people study and it, just to, to get uh, to a place together, it's very hard to do. However, uh, you don't have to get to a rockstar jam to be a successful rockstar or have a, a successful uh, run in the community. I mean, the community is a lot more than just being a rock star. Uh, and that's that, that the emphasis that us as rock stars 
give to other uh, community members. You don't have to go to Stockholm to, to be in the community. You only uh, have to be active and interest in, in what happens in the community. And that is that you have to like Spotify, obviously. You, you have to use it a lot and you have to have the experience of, uh, uh, I speak for myself, for example, I, I create playlists. So that's the reason I came to the community because uh, I wanted to uh, be better at it. And you can ask questions to other playlist uh, curators how to do that. And that's what happens in the community. If, if you are a musician and you want to get your music to be noted uh, using Spotify, I said, uh, as a platform for your music, well, you can uh, get to community and possibly get in touch with other musicians and, and, and develop these kind of relationships. So what has happened in my case personally is that I, I get to meet these people in person uh, once a year, but the relationship is a year long relationship. And, and even if I don't see them, for example, last year, we didn't have one. I mean, this year, I'm sorry, this year, we didn't, we didn't have a Rockstar Jam, but I still keep in touch with them. I mean, we're friends in Instagram. We have ourselves added in Facebook, Twitter, all the social networks. And we get, uh, we get updates on our lives outside of Spotify through other social networks. So the, delay, the, the uh, relationship is a lot more uh, intricate about lives and sharing this, this stuff. Yeah, I think that's important to say at the end of the day, this is really about relationships, it sounds like. And whether it's Spotify building a relationship with its customers and super fans or with its super fans with each other, I think that's like the key here. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going yeah, to add one yeah. yeah. Uh, I want, uh, what I want to say is that we developed a friendship and those kind of friendships are often more uh, valuable to us than your next door, next uh, door neighbor. I mean, sometimes uh, with people close to you, you don't get that uh, fulfillment of having the same interests. And if you are in the Spotify community, you know you are talking to people that have the same interests as you. Mm -hmm. And you get to in touch with uh, development teams that uh, if you are a developer, it's very interesting to know how they work inside Spotify. And, and that's the kind of uh, knowledge you get from it, from the program. Not, not uh, a lot more, it's more rewarding to, to, to see the, that kind of thing of, uh, for example, Today we're talking about community management. And when you're in the program, uh, you're, you're diving into the community management thing. And uh, if you are a community man a manager, uh, you get the experience to manage a community, even if you're not an employee from Spotify. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of aspects about the community that you get to grow uh, personally and professionally, or even you can listen to new music that you weren't listening before. So that you get those kind of uh, rewards from the program that it's not about uh, going to Stockholm every year or getting these merchandise or it, it's very intricate. And, right. and also very interesting when uh, you want to develop a similar program like this. That's a really good point. Well, I, I am aware we are at the top of the hour. Is there anything else that Allison or Oscar you wanna add that I haven't asked about or? or hasn't been said? Well, I'll just add one more quick note yeah. to Ezra's question, you know, about deepening relationships. I think one of the things that has been important to us is uh, consistency and creating opportunities to meet each other. And we do, so we do hold a monthly um, optional kind of uh, campfire session um, for our rock stars as well. And often we bring in subject matter experts from across the company to share a little bit of a presentation or, you know, at the very beginning of lockdown, the conversation was entirely social, uh, just getting to uh, see each other and, and share stories of how we were all getting by. And so we do host that on a monthly basis. And then I think as Oscar, you know, mentioned, there's a lot of extension to other social networks. And so individually people do create these bonds and, um, and 
you know, continue to develop their uh, friendships outside of, of the Spotify community as well. And, you know, finally, you know, as we are not having the jam this year, one thing we're thinking about long term um, is, and one thing that has become clear throughout the pandemic is that there is a real, um, you know, meeting, there's nothing that's going to replace in-person meetings, but I think, you know, we were maybe too, we were all probably quite rigidly thinking like in-person or like maybe having more resistance to kind of these online conferences, communities, meetups. So just having more of them at a regular frequency. I mean, this uh, conversation is a great example. I love that there's going to be a 15 minute chat after and that it happens on a, such a regular basis, you know, just holding something like this and, and keeping, um, keeping the conversation open uh, and a place where community members can rely on and know kind of is there for them, I think is so important. And so as we're reevaluating our, our means of connecting in the future, we're definitely considering bringing in more and uh, more and more frequent events and live events. It's such a great point you make about programming because I think programming is a really great part of any community and I guess it's at Spotify's core in terms of how to think about programming. Um, I am going to just give you the opportunity to jump off if you want to for anyone who's here as to go to a meeting, but please, please, please stay if you feel like it, if you want to. Um, as Allison reminded everyone, we are going to be hanging out for, I would say, until about 20 after um, to just talk about some of the stuff that came up today. And Oscar, if you want to stay as well, you're more than welcome, Allison, but like totally cool if you need to jump off. Um, so I'll give everyone the opportunity to leave and thank you so much to those who did join. Uh, this was a great conversation. I feel like I learned so much and everyone asked great questions. So thank you, really, really appreciate. But I'll be here hanging out, uh, stick around if you want. Um, I'm gonna give it like a minute or two. I'm just gonna jump to the other room, but I'll be back. Don't go away if you wanna hang. <laughs> thank you again, Allison and Oscar, this is great. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> who else we got we got a bunch of people we have so anyone who's still here if you could please like actually put your video on so i can see you unless you're like really not interested in which case i will understand um and maybe just introduce yourself russell i know you you were here last time and i'm so happy you're here again um maybe just introduce yourself tell us what you like what your connection to the community industry is if at all um yeah, hold on. Yeah, Russell, why don't you go first? So, so Allison and Oscar know. I have to remember to unmute myself. Yes, you do. Because what I said was brilliant and I don't remember it. I mean, it, it very much was. Go for yeah, it again. But it didn't work. So, uh, hi, I'm Russell Rieger. I'm, I'm, I've, uh, I started a, uh, a media tech company dealing with um, micro communities and the independent creative community with um, several people and we're already launched. Um, but um, high Spotify, I, I was in the music industry for 30 years and built and ran two record labels and managed a bunch of artists. Yeah, what are, that's a good backdrop. I feel like that's a pretty good backdrop for, for the Spotify uh, installment of it. <laughs> yeah, definitely so, appreciating uh, that. So, uh, and and I was a, I'm a big proponent and only use you as the platform. Oh, thank you. That is huge. But I have one issue with you. Bring it on. Because the only way I get to relax besides whiskey is I'll have my phone, I'll go somewhere, and I'll just riff off making my own. I'll just start going song after song after song like I used to DJ, mm -hmm. and it's never saved. Mm, your history. Not, your, yes, there should be a thing that sits there and goes, if you just did 30 songs and you went, oh, that was actually good, that you could get it. And unless you actually create a playlist and then save each time, you can't do that. 
You can view. Gosh, I'm, not on, I'm not on your forum until today. I didn't know <laughs> yeah. about being a super rock star. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't automatically save, but we do have a uh, recent history, listening history. Oh. So you could do that. And I can't confirm, but there may be a way then um, to, well, if you're on desktop, to bulk select and drag into a playlist. Oh, um, no, w way too much work. But, but I know, I know. Thank you. That's Throw the idea on there. We'll, we'll, so, uh, so that's the, the kind of questions that we get to answer every day. And... It's, it's more about how to use it. Uh, and if you have a, a suggestion about it, uh, you can do it in the community. And it already has, I mean, there's already an idea about uh, saving a playlist from your queue, which is very popular. Yeah. And, and that, that should, uh, I mean, it has the votes for it to be uh, uh, nominated to the developers or something. And for example, I, I would say, uh, if I get the, that question asked, what I say usually is that uh, you should open an account in Last.fm. And the Last.fm is a service that lets you log all your listening. Mm -hmm. So you could, if, you, if you use iTunes, for example, and you, use, uh, you listen to music on iTunes, Last.fm records all the, the songs that you're, you have listened in the past. And then you add your Spotify account and it also records all the music that you listen on Spotify. So in, in time, you, you, you create a profile, a musical profile, and you can see, oh, uh, what are, did I listen before to this artist? And you go to that artist and they say, oh, you listened to that on November 12, 2012, for example. And you don't remember it, but Last FM has a log of all your listening habits. I didn't even know uh, that still lives. Uh, uh, yes, I mean it, it's twenty years from that, and it's still it's a thing. I mean, cool. It's it's very interesting to use. Uh, I'm a, a heavy Last FM user because uh, I want to have statistics about my listening habits. Mm -hmm. And if you're into music, that's very valuable. See, Sarah, the rabbit hole that you brought in. I know. I'm like, oh, my God, didn't know this would be, Allison didn't know this would be a user feedback session. You got to build this. Well, I want to make sure we have a chance for, is it um, Rigotti? Can you pronounce your name and just introduce yourself? You're here from South Africa. Did I read that right? Oh, hi. I'm Rahadi. I work in, I'm a university chaplain and part of my interest in digital campfires was during lockdown where we just could not gather and was trying to find out how best to do it and i remember one of the things we normally have is an exam service and we set up a spotify playlist and we made it collaborative so people could share could add their own favorite songs so we created almost like if you were creating a church in the church service so we could just use a Spotify playlist to do that and so it was one of those things we mm. the students could use it for a long time even long after the actual service event and then we had it for going on for a long time so which is why I was asking about uh, the rock community and how does it fit into your bigger vision because so much of Spotify seems to be encouraging community and building relationships. Yeah, that's a great question and we didn't get to it. So maybe Allison, you could answer that and they'll just read it so you know, it's because it's mm -hmm. cut out a little bit, but how does the Rockstar community fit into the broader vision of Spotify, seeing that Spotify already encourages collaboration and building relationships via creating playlists and sharing them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so in this case, you know, it is um, the community aspects of the product itself are, increasingly rich and that's definitely a strategic area of focus for us not only again creating social listening experiences where um, shared playlists are a great example we now have kind of live sessions where you could use a the spotify code and you know send it to a friend halfway around the world and be listening to the same track at the same time and crowdsource um, play there um, you know and then you think about creator to fan aspects of social engagement and community building um, 
and even, you know, an artist playlist. And, and I think a lot of it does center around this uh, notion of playlists as a central, like, shareable feature. Um, the rock stars, I suppose, you know, they aren't necessarily, like, incorporated into that overall product vision, but certainly support that vision, again, through, you know, through feedback, design iteration, participation in the development, and even in so much as the communication and messaging plans, um, helping to promote those futures, adopting those futures, and then using them on community as well to some degree to give more people exposure to them. Um, so it's a great question. I think, you know, we talked at the beginning of this session also about like findability of the community itself can be difficult. It's not like it's an aspect of the experience that we're promoting through our email marketing campaigns or even in the app, you know, with direct links. So they do exist. They do support each other to some degree, but they aren't fully integrated. And um, at this moment, we don't necessarily have plans to integrate uh, in a very like deep way, I would say. Yeah, I hope that. Does that answer your question? Like in terms of how, what the vision is? Because I think it's a great one. Oh, okay. Maybe she didn't hear me. <laughs> I yeah, I love though that you that you're using that collaborative playlist feature and bringing music into um, you know into your services. I think uh, it's a really important um, yeah important way you know humans connect through music and being able to leave some but leave everybody with that playlist. Um, listen and them discover new music and mm -hmm. uh and yeah so very much so thanks for sharing that yeah um russell did you have other questions beyond user feedback questions maybe <laughs> not that there's no, anything I, wrong I, with I, those I, i'm just i was just fascinated about the um about the the fact that there was some kind of community within spotify because i'm a i'm a i always believe in the passionate fan base and um and, and just listening to how they're trying to make that work and, and bring it about. So it was, it was, um, it was, it was great to listen to and learn um, because I didn't know it existed. Yeah, I think most people don't. I mean, unless you're just excited and always on the forums, I mean, you wouldn't know, which is why I love it. Cause you kind of have to be going there already, right? That's already a barrier. Yeah, it was some, it, it well, it, it seemed like it was something else that became that the community itself almost birthed mm -hmm. and then Spotify is taking advantage of it. So I, I just thought that was, uh, I just thought that was great. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I think that really does speak to the, you know, overall potential, um, which is, you know, when, whenever you launch a new community and our community is not new, really by many standards anymore, we've got almost a decade of experience and time to, you know, to growth and, um, I think that you really don't, and and I uh, also, for what Oscar mentioned earlier, initially there was a lot about consumption and how to use streaming as a platform. And now we're recognizing that there's a need on the creator side, um, particularly as Spotify has acquired and incorporated companies and platforms like Anchor, for example, which is democratizing podcast and show creation and these are new people coming on to anchor as a platform trying to create content reach an audience um, that's a whole nother type of you know opportunity i think in the community space that that we do well to think about now in terms of uh, extending the community and and meeting other uh, types of user needs as well it's a smart idea they're separate but the podcast community especially around many of the areas that you have with the, with, with the murder things or anything like mm -hmm. that, the mm -hmm. music, or even the music stuff is, is a great thing to actually create different lanes. And then since you're the pipes underneath, it's a, it's not a bad thing to, to be able to cross market and figure that out. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I feel like that's in the pipeline. <laughs> It's no comment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It feels like kind of like sky's the limit. Like you've created this, um, real like you have the what I kind of was getting at with Oscar is like the emotion of it and like the feeling the feeling of connection that Oscar and his peers feel um to the brand is like you can't 
buy that. Like you can't manufacture that. That's developed. It's, as I said, it's a relationship over time. And when you think of the amount of brands who actually can cultivate that and actually say like, we have that, it's not common, you know, it's, it's rare. So um, I think it really speaks to the thoughtfulness with which you've built this program. And um, it's just like major kudos. Like I've, I've been, it's, I learned so much today. So thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Like a template, like a template. I want to just be like, here's what to do. I mean, obviously it's not, you can't like plug and play, but it's a very, very helpful um, roadmap, I think, for a lot of companies that are trying to build this. Yeah. I think, you know, to use those as guiding principles, exactly. if you will, you know, yeah, I think that's. Um, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, does anyone have any other things to add questions before we jump off? This is just, you know, I'm so thrilled you, you stuck around. This is like my dream. <laughs> yeah, this was a blast. Um, wow. And yeah, really, really fun to, um, to share the time with Oscar as well. I think, uh, yeah, so thanks for giving us the opportunity to share the story. Totally happy to. As I said, it was like my North Star get Spotify on and you know that I harassed you for months and then Oscar came into the fold and make it even better. So thank you. <laughs> Hardly harassed. Uh, I mean, just like a gentle, just a gentle prodding. Hey, just checking in. <laughs> no, I so appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you um, to, to our hanger outers. This is, this is great. I love this. Russell and Ricotti, I really appreciate you joining as well. I'm going to jump off unless, unless there's more, I think we're, we've reached the end, but, uh, but come next time I'm having Reddit on in two weeks. We're going to have yeah, awesome. more conversations all about, I mean, very different platform, obviously, yeah. but, uh, I'm really excited for that one. Cause it's going to be more, uh, focused on, I think a little bit about the unbundling of Reddit and how brands can get involved. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, right. uh, I just wanted to mention that, uh, like I said before, it, it's really good, like the, the thing that you're doing here. I mean, in this world of bots and likes and mm -hmm. algorithms, yeah. these uh, digital campfires are what uh, get the human aspect of, the, of all this. And now with uh, COVID, uh, it's evolving and it's, it's really fun to have these conversations. I'm so glad you appreciate it. And thank you for taking the time to look back at some of the old episodes. I mean, this started in COVID, right? Like I'm launched this in mid-April. So it's all a work in progress and experiment. I'm learning as I go. So thank you. That means a lot. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right. More soon. Bye. Talk to you guys later. Thank you. I'm going to end, but uh, have a great rest of your day and night for South Africa. <laughs> Thanks again.